that this could be true. That that's could be true. And that's, that's actually really interesting, for, I think, right across the genre, particularly for writing for kids, obviously, because kids have a, an ability to suspend their, their sense of disbelief enormously. Um, but certainly that, that bringing that fant those fantasy elements into, in, even into other genres. Yeah, and it's, it, it can be the difference, in fact, between uh, with younger kids, there's a freedom in that you don't have to justify everything. You can just mm. say, Good point. This is, here's a mad fact I'm going to give you, and believe me, it's true, and they'll go, fine. Yeah. Because they don't care, they just want a good story. And then as you get into, as readers get older and they get more cynical and they demand more justification and more reason, then you're, you have to become more convincing. Um, you have to be more detailed in your descriptions, you have to be more, um, you have to persuade more. Okay. And um, the more uh, fantasy you become, the more, um, the more fantasy element you add to the story, the more persuasive you must be that this could be true. Okay, and so it has, to, and it has to ring true. Particularly, I mean, and bearing in mind, two kids these days are very techno uh, out there. They're in there. They're into all the gadgets. They're mm. into the games. They're into um, all sorts of different areas. So it's if you're trying to persuade somebody, you know, in that say nine to twelve age group or maybe a bit older, then you need to be very conscious of what's going on around you. Would you? They are, and you're also, I mean, you're dealing with kids who have access to a huge amount of entertainment now mm. at will. Mm. That, that, that um, even when I was a kid, we wouldn't have had access to. So, I mean, to give you an example, we were watching, we, let, we finally let our 13-year-old watch Jaws, thinking, here we go, you know, let's brace ourselves, oh, he's going to yeah. be terrified, going to be weeks of nightmares. And he went, yeah, that, well, that wasn't that scary, really. <laughs> and at his age, I was standing behind oh, the sofa God, watching yeah. it. So, it's because it had influenced so many stories up to this mm. point. So many people of my, our generation um, had been influenced by this film and, and the techniques that Spielberg used that by the time he watched it, it was old hat to him because he'd seen so many other things that had come from that. And that's, that's what you're dealing with a lot of the time with kids is they're, they're already so well versed in storytelling um, that you have, to, you have to stay ahead of them. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the kids can sit and watch a DVD and they can rewind like he, uh, you know, our 13 year old watches DVDs or did when he was younger and he would rewind and he would learn the lines of dialogue you know yeah. so they're, they're, they've got these lines they can whip out in context as well mm. so you're, that's what you're competing with yeah absolutely and, and, and that whole thing about the, the, the online world with, and the, the rewinding of the DVD but also the, the accessibility to YouTube to Google to all this information that if you want your fantasy world to feel real I mean particularly you as rat runners and you're talking about a surveillance state there but you're talking to kids who understand about surveillance they understand about GPS and um, you know, Google Earth and Google Maps. My daughter's 13 too, and she's always on Google. She's, you can't live anywhere, but she doesn't know what the outside of your house mm. looks like. So that, I mean, particularly when you were writing, writing Rat Runners, that must have been something that you were, you know, I was very conscious of it. I mean, you're, you're, you're really taking your life in your hands when you're talking about technology to kids because they're already up on it. And um, actually, most of the t almost all of the technology, bar one thing in Rat Runners, exists already. It hasn't been used to the extent that it's been used mm. there, but... Um, and in some cases, I actually simplified it because you, people wouldn't believe what's actually used already. Wow. Yeah. Um, so um, with this, there, there was one part of it that's really only theoretical, but the rest is real, mm -hmm. actually. It's just being applied in a slightly different way. Um, and so I, I, I mean, I would have had to read a lot because I didn't want to get caught out. I mean, you're, you have to be given a certain amount of license to, to play with it and to create the story. But at the same time, you know there's going to be nerds out there going, oh, hang on a second now, no, no, that wouldn't work, that's mm -hmm. not, uh, you, you couldn't do that, or yeah. you've, got, you've used the wrong operating system for that entirely, or that, that would, you, you could, there's a difference between a virus and a worm, you know. So um, all this kind of stuff, you think, oh, I can't, I've got to get this right. But at the end of the day, it's just got to sound convincing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have to be an expert in all these subjects, but you do have to, the bit that you, you bring in, you have to know beyond.